All right, welcome everyone to a brand new period of development. We're going to talk about middle childhood now. In our introduction here, we'll be looking at physical and cognitive development today. Um, so a couple notes. We're looking at around six to 12 years of age now. Um, and sometimes I'll call to this age group uh, school age children. You'll hear me say that a lot. That's uh, synonymous here. So I'll say middle childhood or school age children throughout the day. Um, so let's get started. We're going to get started with physical and motor development. That'll be this video's topic. Um, so in middle childhood, obviously, kids are getting bigger, stronger, and they have more endurance. So we're going to talk about the ways that they're growing physically with body growth, motor development, and also brain development. In terms of patterns of growth, let's look at height. So at six years old, the average height is 45 inches tall. And at 12 years old, the average is about 60 inches or five feet tall. So some pretty steady growth occurring during this period. Um, and we see definitely see a growth spurt after this period in adolescence, but we'll get to that later in the semester. Um, but there is some considerable growth occurring here, um, even if it's not as fast as adolescence or when they're a baby. Um, so what plays a role in height? Genetics, of course, this is a, probably the best predictor of height. Children's height will often be similar to at least one of their parents. Environment can also play a role, though. This is something that might be overlooked. Things like nutrition, illness, other environmental factors can play a role as well. For example, many Mayan families migrated from Guatemala in the US from the 70s to 90s. When this happened, when children's heights were compared later on, Mayan American children who migrated were four and a half inches taller on average than their Mayan peers living in Guatemala. This is very significant, four and a half inch difference um, on average in this, this span of time when they were you know, immigrating to the US compared to back in Guatemala. So there must have been something about the US environment that contributed to taller height, um, perhaps uh, access to nutrition, whatever it might have been. So there's evidence that quality of an environment can impact growth. Children with less access to nutritious food and a good health care are usually smaller than their peers. And even illness can play a role. Illness can slow the rate of growth, but a child can catch up if they get adequate nutrition after the illness is, is over. What about the other aspect, the other side of this, weight? So at six years old, average weight is about 45 pounds. And at 12 years old, the average weight is about 90 pounds. This is also influenced by both genetic and environmental factors. Obesity accounts for about 15% of school age children, um, the risk. So 15% of school age kids are at risk for obesity. The rates of obesity have steadily increased since the 1970s. And many studies have linked overconsumption of soft drinks as one of the major contributors to this childhood obesity. Um, sodas, sugary drinks are very normalized in many US children's daily routines. Other contributors though, are genetics, of course, could be family and cultural patterns of food consumption and exercise. Uh, what are the cultural foods embedded in their family's culture? Um, and the, you know, how much it's emphasized to play sports, take walks, whatever it is. Uh, also just socioeconomic status. So the parents might have to resort to quick foods that aren't as nutritionally dense and are higher in fats because they are cheaper and more convenient. They're readily available, right? So this could be one of another factor, right? So the outcomes of obesity, we can look at health outcomes. So things like asthma, heart disease, diabetes, these are some risks of long-term obesity. And of course, there are also some possible social outcomes. Like when they're getting into the school age group, they're definitely around peers now, and they might experience more peer rejection, withdrawal, maybe lower self-esteem and may face discrimination in their daily lives. Um, so there are some risks in terms of health and social outcomes. What about motor development? So school-age kids are becoming more impressive with their motor skills as they continue practicing and fine tuning them, of course. Now they can jump, they can throw with accuracy, they can have improved balance, agility and strength. 
However, we do see some general gender differences in motor development. On average, boys tend to have more power and force. So they can typically jump farther, run slightly faster, throw further, tend to be uh, better at kicking, catching, dribbling, those kinds of things that involve power and force. Girls on the other end tend to have better agility, balance, and fine motor skills. So better balance, more agile, better fine motor skills like drawing and writing, and, some, and better foot movement like skipping, hopping, gymnastics, things like that. So why do we think we see these gender differences? Genetics can play a role. Um, genetics, uh, also just going back to biological sex, differences could be seen there, but a large part of it is also just cultural ideas of gender appropriate activities. So obviously they're gonna be better at the skills that they practice more often. And what they practice more often will usually stem from the cultural norms that they that their you know, culture partakes in and emphasizes to them about gender. Um, gender appropriate activities, going back to gender from the last time. So that is a little summary on motor development. Um, so we do see improvement, as you may have guessed, is because they're getting older and more um, developed. So of course we see improvements here with motor development, but it's also noting these gender differences. Lastly, brain development. So the brain growth is slowing down during this period, but it is still myelinating and pruning. And what I'm talking about here is the physical brain growth. So the early years of middle childhood from about six to eight years old are said to be a period of growth that has very significant changes in their cognitive skills. So the brain doesn't grow that much in size, as we said here, it's growing slowly, but there are very complex changes in how it's functioning internally and uh, how it's organizing information. So the maturing brain gives way for new thinking capabilities like better control and attention, the better ability to solve complex problems and to explicit planning, things like that. So that leads us into uh, the next section we'll go over, which is cognitive development. Um, so this was a shorter part of the day, but we'll end this here. That was physical development in middle childhood. Um, but the large part of the day will be cognitive development. So that is where we're headed. Thank you for joining everyone. And I will see you as we go along.